morning, friends. I want to welcome you to our worship service for August 16th. Uh, this is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost now, if you can imagine time going by that quickly. I was blessed to be able to take last week off and be uh, with my family in Traverse City, and, and we sure enjoyed that. But it is nice to be back and able to worship with you again. Uh, today, uh, we have the introduction for this day. It says, in Isaiah, we hear that God's house shall be a house of prayer for all people and that God will gather the outcasts of Israel. The Canaanite woman in today's gospel is a Gentile, an outsider, who is unflinching in her request that Jesus would heal her daughter. As Jesus commends her bold faith, how might our church extend its mission to those on the margins today? In our gathering, we receive strength to be signs of comfort, healing, and justice for those in need. Please join me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall lend divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true, where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and as symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Here the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ the feast that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God from which nothing can separate us, and the life-giving Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day for August 16th. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from the prophet Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Isaiah writes, Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God who gathers the outcast of Israel. I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm assigned for today is from the 67th Psalm. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations of the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Here ends the psalm. Our second reading for today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 11th chapter. Paul continues his letter by saying, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now become disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We prepare our hearts for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters into the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. 
Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I don't know about other preachers, but for me, writing a, a sermon is, well, sometimes it's a dangerous and stressful process. I find myself wrestling with scriptures that all too often convict me and, and, and try to, to flush out the sins and the pride and the, the corruption that lie hidden in my soul. And, and then when I, I hear that word that the texts preach to me, I try to find the words and the, the courage to, to preach it to you folks as well. And you know, I, I guess that may at times be unfair of me because Lord knows that you folks probably don't all have the, the same sins and weaknesses that I fall into, but I, I guess I figure that a few of you might at, at times share in my plight. And I tell you this because I think that it's just fair warning that our text today is one of those texts that convicts me right now. And it does it in a way that resonates with our times. And, and the truth is that I really wish that it didn't. What I mean by that is I, I wish our, our text for today would at least have the grace to convict me in a way that didn't have echoes of the social and political rumblings that have erupted around the world lately. Because, because whenever it does, it draws me into sermons that are perhaps a, a, a bit too edgy for our, our comfort because they may seem like a politically biased statement when in fact they're, they're only meant as faith statements, expressions of how the gospels and the scriptures and our Lord himself seem to, to call us to live the love that he revealed to us in our time and in our place. One of the things I've contemplated a lot lately is how odd it seems that the very things that we might have proclaimed loudly and clearly from the pulpit in times past when, when there was no political heat around that specific issue, we shy away from in the moment when they have become politicized, right? And we do that not because our theology has changed, or, or that we've rethought the issue and, and we no longer believe that it's true or viable or, or needed, but simply because it's now taken on the, the baggage of being a politicized issue. And we feel the, the need to give it space so as not to offend our friends who, who might approach it from a, a different political perspective. But of course, the problem is that when we take that approach, the voice of faith, it becomes silent in the very moment that it would seem to be most relevant and perhaps even most needed in our culture. So all that being said, in our text today, we have the story of Jesus being confronted by the Canaanite woman who asks him to have mercy on her daughter. And we remember that the Canaanites were considered outsiders by those of Jewish faith and, and heritage. They were considered unclean, enemies of the true faith. They'd fall under the umbrella of Gentiles, Gentiles being people of any nationality or ethnicity 
other than those of Hebrew descent. They were disparaged. They were despised. They were looked down upon. They were ignored. They were believed to be less than, and they were openly treated as such. This was the social context that Jesus was born into. And we remember that Jesus was both fully human and fully divine. And to be fully human, well, that means that he was born with the same kind of a brain, the same kind of abilities, the same kind of dependence on his culture and his teachers to learn to understand his environment and to make sense of his world that, that we ourselves have. That's part of what it is to be human. And, and, and that wasn't superseded by some kind of divine inside track on all things. Jesus learned, he, he grew, he experienced life, but he did it all with a grace that revealed the identity of God. So you know what? I'm not surprised to find him at first expressing the biases of his culture when he speaks to or actually avoid speaking to this Canaanite woman. He sees himself as sent only to the lost children of Israel until she presses the issue, until she points out what was obvious from her perspective that she too was fully human, created by the same God, loved by the same God, and just as worthy of respect and compassion as anyone else was. And when she expressed this, Jesus didn't turn and run from it, as so many would who found their social and political biases endangered by anything so trivial as the truth. Instead, he grasped it. He owned it. He acted upon it. She was a, a Gentile, but of course the scriptures were full of promises that God would bless even the Gentiles through the Jewish people. That was part of that basic Abrahamic covenant that they would be blessed in order to be a blessing to others, a blessing to foreigners, a blessing to Gentiles. She was a Canaanite. But we recall that at least three of these despised Canaanite women were noted as mothers in Jesus' own ancestral genealogy, Tamar, Ruth, Rahab. And she, she had the courage of her convictions, the faith in God as she understood God to face the Son of God and plead for mercy in spite of all the bigotry and bias and enmity between her people and his. And you know what? The Son of God got it. The Son of God processed the moment and gave her the favor that she asked for. The Son of God realized that her life her daughter, her concerns mattered. And he blessed her. And the Canaanite girl was healed. Friends, that was a, a very big deal in Jesus' ministry. This was one of a, a very few times when Jesus had declared his reluctance to do something and then found himself convinced and converted towards doing the very thing that he had declined to do. Other examples being, well, turning the water into wine at that wedding in Cana at his mother's request, and bearing the cup of the cross on Golgotha at his father's request. And we tend to miss just how controversial this act was because we're so disconnected from the biases and the, the prejudices of Jesus' times. To us, uh, a Samaritan woman or a, a Canaanite woman or a, a Hebrew woman or a, a Greek woman. Well, they were pretty much all the same to us. Those, those are just words to us. The significant part is that they were all women, right? We get that. And, and why wouldn't Jesus be expected to treat the one woman like any other woman? But you can bet that the onlookers got the social and political impact of Jesus's actions. 
his act of mercy to this woman was sure to have been taken by some as a direct insult to the customs and traditions and perhaps even the, the faith that they had been raised in. It may have been understated. It may have been, well, unspoken. It may have been politely covered up with seemingly good excuses for the, the arrogance of the privileged culture but the bias was there nonetheless. And when Jesus healed this Canaanite woman's daughter, he was making a statement that was as politically and socially controversial as a, a Black Lives Matter sign might be for many people today. And amazingly enough, the fact that Jesus openly confronted the injustice of the, the bigotry of his society in this act has in no way settled the matter, even for many Christians living 2,000 years later. And the deal is that so very many of us are, are people who would be technically considered unclean Gentiles, by the standards of Jesus' day. And we would therefore have been excluded not only from the Jewish faith, but if some had had their way, even from the Christian faith. That was a debate that, that we see rise up in the book of Acts and in several of Paul's letters. But now we have been accepted in the faith and not as second tier members who are included just so long as we maintain certain standards not placed on others, we have been blessed to be fully included as children of our God. And we can proudly say that most of us have gotten past any reservations we may have once had about joining Jesus and saying that Canaanite lives matter and Samaritan lives matter, and Gentile lives matter. I pray that the God that Jesus claimed as his Father will empower us to continue to grow in our faith and in our lives of love so that one day there might no longer be any reason for anyone to question whether these lives matter or, or those lives do for they all do. But until we live out that truth, we must keep our hearts open to those who raise the question. And like Jesus, we must be ready to turn from the subtlety of our prejudice and face the truth of our own biases and reach out in mercy until there are no longer any outsiders and all people are one in the kingdom of our God. Amen. At this time, our worship continues as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in our prayers of intercession for today. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage. Renew soils stripped of nutrients 
and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing. Today we especially pray for Inez, Jacob, Austin, Diane, Marge, Bob, John, Shirley, Denny, Jim, Vince, Irene, Marie, Chet, Donna, Elaine, Marcia, Marion, Kim, Cheryl, Cecilia, Myrtle, and Bishop Craig Satterley. Along with these prayers, we continue to lift all the staff and residents of the Samaritas Lodge. And we offer our condolences to the families of Ellie Stewart and Jeff Carter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant our congregation grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are, are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. this time in our offertory prayer. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. So friends, I want to thank you for gathering and worship with us uh, for this service today. Uh, I pray that you're blessed even through this virtual form of worship that we've been doing. I know it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. I know it's not the same experience that we have when we gather in person. But please know uh, that we are trying the best that we can to offer the, the best, the most authentic worship that we can. And we look forward to the time that we can gather with you once again in person uh, and share communion and do all those things that we're uh, so used to doing and that we find fulfillment in. In the meantime, we give thanks for the opportunity to, to gather even in, in this manner. And I pray that you do find God's blessing in it and that blessing, uh, it draws you to go out and be a blessing for others. In Jesus' name. Amen. We receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Jesus said, as the Father sends me, so I send you. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Give us bread for the journey. Give us bread.